Hi everyone. My name is Jonathan Ball, Bob Zihi, and I'm a singer-songwriter and actor. Uh, but today, however, I don't think I'll be sharing uh, very much about my singing or about how I get into roles that I've played. Instead, I want to talk about something else that has been extremely important in my life. Walking. So, we all walk in some form or other. For some it may be assisted, for others it may be a new skill that we're just acquiring. But for human beings, walking, or at least the idea of walking, is what gets us moving forward. So, we're all kind of experts at this already, right? So what's the big deal? What is there to talk about? Well, as babies, other than eating and sleeping, one of our greatest urges is to stand up and to walk. Take baby John, for example. So, in an attempt to get to the other side of the room, he stumbles to his feet, takes a couple of wobbly steps, and of course falls on his hands and knees, continuing to struggle to relentlessly crawl towards the shiny thing that he has somehow seen before. In many ways, baby John is fearless, motivated by a singular desire to get what he wants, no matter how far it may be. Because let's be honest, everything is far for a baby. So what does he do? He gets there and he, he wants to take that thing and put it in his mouth, and taste it, regardless of any of the consequences. Then one day, baby John has to learn the rules to protect himself from his dangerous impulses. His mom says, Legos aren't food. His dad tells him that he can't jump off the living room sofa because he'll get hurt. His grandma says, you can't run around the house like that, you break things. His grandfather says, you can't clean your father's album collection by throwing it all in the fish tank. Then his uncle says, you're too quiet for the business world. Auntie says, you're too serious for the entertainment world. His friends say, you're too Western for the local scene. And then his mentors will say that you're too local for the competitive international scene. And so, John learns to sit still. He learns the rules. He learns his limitations and steers clear of harm's way. John is becoming an adult. Now let's fast forward a few years. Now, I don't think this works. Hang on. Now, John is a banker. Oops. Now John is a banker. The work is challenging, but he's comfortable. He goes to the same desk every day, and he's told that if he keeps his head down, and he continues to hustle, that in a few years he'll be promoted, and he'll make the kind of money that he needs to live a comfortable life. Now these days, John spends most of his days sitting, and the most walking he does is to and from work, or on a treadmill in the gym. Sometimes, though, John would reminisce about the days when he would pursue his music with a fiery passion. He even dreamt of recording an album and one day sharing his melodies with the rest of the world. But all the while, there was this voice in the back of his head that kept telling him, John, keep these vain, impractical pipe dreams to yourself. How many have you seen actually make it? Do you want to be one of those starving artists who ends up having their parents carry him on his back for the rest of their lives? So John goes back to the office. He looks out the window, down at the bustling city streets, at all of the people just rushing to their respective destinations, as he just sits there, sipping his coffee and typing in rows and rows of numbers into his Excel sheet. I recently read this wonderful book called The Alchemist, which I highly recommend if you haven't already read it. It tells the story of a young Spanish shepherd who left his hometown for an epic voyage of self-discovery to Egypt. 
in search of what he called his personal legend. Now bear in mind, this story takes place at a time before planes and cars. So needless to say, our hero's journey is long and trying, taking him from open fields to uncertain waters, from otherworldly oases to war-torn deserts. But he never gave up. He never forgot his dream, the treasure at the end of his journeys, his personal legend. There was no shortage of crippling defeats or paralyzing self-doubt leading to weeks or even months of him being completely lost in every sense of the word. But at the end of the day, whether or not he had a clear plan of where he was going to go, he always chose to keep walking. Now the author of this book, Mr. Paolo Coelho, in the introduction, describes four obstacles that he thinks that every person, including the protagonist of this story, encounters as they pursue their dreams and strive to live out their personal legend. The fear of dreaming, the restraints of love, the fear of defeat, and the fear of being unworthy of our dreams. Now, our shepherd, he walked many, many miles to learn these lessons, but I have a feeling that everybody in this room has somehow, in their own life experience, come across these obstacles. Now, let's circle back to Baby John real quick. That's not a very good picture. <laughs> so, like all children, he was born with no real concept of what is impossible. Simply put, everything is possible, if we wanted to. He could cook up a tasty, edible hamburger out of Legos. If he wanted to, he could fly off the living room couch and land miles away on his favorite park. If he really put in the effort, he could be singing his songs for tens of thousands of fans at the Beijing National Stadium tomorrow. He could do it tomorrow. He could star in the next Hollywood blockbuster paying his favorite superhero, or he could even start a multinational production company, creating platforms for young talent from all over. But no, everybody around him kept saying, no, 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 this isn't for you. So he learns to fear his dreams. He even learns to resent them a little bit, calling them naive and childish in attempts to protect his ego. Through some stroke of luck, he meets a, produ a producer, someone he really clicks with. He shows him some old songs that he'd been working on since college, and even starts working on some new ones. But as blissful as those days in the studio were making music, there was always that darn voice in the back of his head. John? What would your parents think if you don't succeed? Did you really study so hard in school just to graduate and pursue a career in something that might have them worry about you all over again? What makes you think you deserve it more than the thousands of other young singers who work just as hard as you but are maybe even more talented? Did you really think you were that special? So John goes back to the office. He stops walking to the studio. He stops dreaming of walking those steps to the stage. He stops walking away from his desk even to think of what might have been. So you might ask, what's wrong? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with compromising just a little bit, living a stable life, providing for our loved ones? What's wrong with realizing that not everybody is cut out to pursue their dreams? Well, there's really nothing wrong with it, honestly, except you wouldn't really be living. As the great Matteo Ricci once said, to walk is to live. To walk is to live. As you push through life every day, we experience things and learn things that we can only learn through experiencing life, and not just by observing it. Now sure, we could stand by the wayside and watch as others pass by 
and go about their business, and maybe even bump into obstacles that we could safely avoid if had we just stand still. But is that really the type of life that you want to live? Where each day could easily be switched out for the next? Where dying today would be no different than dying five years from now? Where you spend more time lamenting what could have been than you actually spend going out and seeing if it were ever possible in the first place? Look, I get it, failure sucks. And stumbling into it feels even worse. Is failure necessary for success? I don't know. But it's definitely inevitable. You can plan ahead, play it safe, and maybe lessen your chances of failure. But at the end of the day, failure is inevitable. So why fear it? As a matter of fact, sometimes the only difference between success and failure is just the perspective from which you look at it. Allow me to share the story of Matteo Ricci, Le Madal, the person I just quoted. So Matteo Ricci, he was an Italian missionary who was sent to China to spread Christianity during the Renaissance period. In China, that was the Ming Dynasty. He left his hometown at a young age in his 20s, first to India, then to China, during which time he witnessed the cultural conflict that had been born from the imperialistic methods that the Western missionaries were taking. They imprisoned, punished, and even killed those who would not heed to the word of the church. But Father Ritchie, he was different. He believed that the only way to spread faith was through mutual love and respect. So he buckled down and he set his course, starting from where he first landed in Macau, all the way to the capital in Beijing. Now this journey, it took him almost 30 years, during which time he was met with almost every obstacle imaginable. He encountered extreme hostility when he was first settling down in Guangdong. Father Richie, he, he resorted to shaving all of his head up, hair off and dressing up like a Buddhist monk to earn the trust of those around him. Now this act, it did serve to ease the pressure surrounding his presence, but it did not actually help his cause as a missionary. It actually caused a rift between him and the Italian church. 10 years, 10 years of learning Chinese and learning the culture, dressed as a monk, and it really didn't get him anywhere. So he shifted his focus to becoming a Confucian scholar, you see. Ten more years of hard work, translating and completing literary works, dozens of them, on topics ranging from Western philosophy and religion to science, all in Chinese. This Italian, he was writing in Chinese. But the road ahead, it was riddled with famine, and plague, and war. But he never gave up. He kept going north toward Beijing. Then one day, he was finally invited into the Forbidden City, the first Westerner ever to do so. He was invited to the Forbidden City to meet the emperor. Unfortunately, after a few years, he realized that this was all for nothing, because the emperor never conceded to meet him in person. Matteo Ricci, he passed away at the age of 57, having spent 28 years on the road in China, never achieving his goals, never spreading Christianity throughout the land, or so he thought. Now to many, Father Ricci is a tragic hero, somebody who spent most of their adult life chasing a dream that could not be realized. But there's something that even he did not realize at the time, and that was on a larger scale, he did succeed, just in a different way, in a way he didn't realize. And his dream was simply the spark to get him moving in the right direction. Now you see, the many years that he spent on the road, teaching, debating, writing, it helped him groom a group of exceptional students who ended up taking high office in the Chinese government. 
implementing changes that reflected his philosophies, both religious and scientific. His books, they caused important cultural dialogue and conversation amongst Chinese scholars at the time. And the reverberations went throughout the land to places he had never been. He even went as far as Korea, where churches were built and communities formed, almost solely based on his writings. He was even the first Westerner ever to be buried on Chinese soil. But most importantly though, he was able to establish a set of principles by which Christians in China could practice traditional Chinese rituals while still being accepted by the church. And this allowed for the widespread practice of Christianity throughout as mandated by the emperor for the very first time. Long story short, he may not have achieved his initial goals, but he ended up reaching something far greater than what he had imagined before. Through every step of the way, he opened realms of new possibility, ultimately revealing a destiny far grander in scheme. Father Ritchie, he had a dream. He kept walking, he stuck with it, and found his true calling. So I did not share this story because of our hero's religious beliefs. No, I didn't do that for that reason. I shared it because, like us, the protagonist had his doubts and his failures and his obstacles. He even had chances to stop and compromise and give up, but he didn't. He rose above it all to find his true purpose. Now it doesn't matter if you are a humble Spanish shepherd like the one from The Alchemist or a misunderstood Italian missionary, like Matteo Ricci, or an immigrant orphan, like the brilliant Steve Jobs, or a high school dropout from a poor family, like Hong Kong's very own Lee Kashi. If you have a dream, be brave, step up, and walk towards it every single day. It doesn't matter if you're defeated. Fall down seven times, get up eight, right? You've heard that. Keep walking. It doesn't matter if you're lost, because maybe you weren't going the right way anyway. Keep walking. It doesn't matter if you feel you're unworthy of your dream, because time will tell. Keep walking. If baby John can stand here today in front of you all, after being told no so many times, then you can too. See, speaking of baby John, he told me to tell you something. He said, the uh, road ahead to your dreams, it may seem very long, but you won't be walking it alone. For many years, John thought he was the only one, until he met his three friends. Well, let's just call them yes, no, and maybe. Okay, that, 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 those are really weird names, but we'll call them that for now. Yes was John's cheerleader, the optimist. The one who, no matter how difficult or impossible things may seem, always told John, you can do it. Yes was the one who got John back up on his feet every time, after every heartbreaking loss. No was John's doubter, the pessimist who always saw the downside before the up. And by default, always tried to keep John from going any further than he had already gone because he feared John would get hurt. No meant well, but he ended up being John's motivation because he pushed John to constantly go and prove no wrong. Then we kept to maybe John's closest friend, the realist. He may not have always approved or disapproved of any of the actions that John took, but he always asked the pertinent questions. How and why are you doing what you're about to do? Maybe was John's voice of reason, keeping him from acting purely on instinct or emotion. He was John's rock. 
So like baby John, I think all of us need those three friends. Yes, no, and maybe. They're equally important, and they will get us walking through thick and thin as we pursue our dreams. Seems pretty simple, right? You got a dream, you keep walking, you bring a couple friends. Voila, dreams come true, right? It worked for the greats, why wouldn't it work for us? Except one little thing. Always keep your eyes and ears and heart open at all times. Now it's great to have a dream to pursue, it's great to have a personal legend to try and realize. But as is the case with most of the people that we've discussed, their greatest reward was not what they initially set out to find. As a matter of fact, it turned out to be something quite different. And how did they achieve this? By having a dream. Walking, insisting, learning from their mistakes, and opening their hearts to new paths that they may not have known at the beginning of their journeys. So with that, I would like to wish you good luck and bon voyage. Because now you have all the, all the tools you need to go the distance. <laughs> Baby John and I, we can't wait to see where you end up. Maybe one day we'll be one of the three friends that you end up finding along the way as you chase your dreams and strive to live out your personal legend. Thank you.